that they come and do it every Sunday, and they aren't here. Oops. <laughs> but we have a backup, right, Mr. Powers? You're on that? No, I saw you working away. Well, guess what? The next ones are in the hymnal, so we're, we're good. You may be seated. Well, again... Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. We are glad you are with us this day and are choosing to worship God with us um, in his house. There is, for each of the fathers on your way out, a gift. And so someone will be there with them on your way out. And uh, you can pick those up, dads, um, just as an expression of our love to you and appreciation is what you do as a dad. Um, the Juno Pregnancy Resource Center baby bottle campaign that we've been uh, having the past month and a little since Mother's Day. Um, if you brought your baby bottle back, um, we are collecting, receiving those, so um, you can give it to me or to Melinda, and we'll see that it gets turned in. And then, um, and if you didn't bring it with you, you can always drop it off here or at the... Uh, Pregnancy Resource Center, which is uh, right next to like Wells Fargo in that area on Glacier Highway. Children's Day next Sunday. Um, just a, a, There will be no children's church during the service. Children will be participating up here. And uh, so we invite you to that. And then I wanted to remind you or let you know of on July 2nd, which is two weeks from today, we'll be having an Independence Day picnic after the service and so bring a side dish to share and uh, we look forward to that time together I think that's it join me now if you would in a word of prayer Heavenly Father we do glorify your name and magnify you and lift you up for you are absolutely worthy of all praise glory and honor Lord we worship you this day Lord, we come with expectation of hearing your voice and of joining in corporate worship. Lord, speak to our hearts as we seek your face this day, I ask. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. If you want to put your finger in certain spots. The first, uh, Be Thou My Vision on 460. And in honor of fathers, we're going to sing a Christian home on 727. And then have thine own way on page 480. And I'll try to help you out on those. 460, be thou my vision. <clears throat> I asked uh, Viliame, Bill, Verbasanya, if he wouldn't mind singing that first verse for us. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou. Thou my best Lord, by day or by night, waking O 
page 727. to our time of family prayer I was looking at that last verse we trust to thee their problems toil and care so we want to do that um, always but even now and I don't know what cares you have but I know who does and um, we just want to offer that would you stand with me as we sing another great hymn that we haven't sung in a long time? Lord, have your way now in our service 
in our lives always. Have thine own way. Hymn number 480. <clears throat> God is so good. I was reading this week in uh, James, and these words came from the Lord for this very moment. As I was going through it, just God impressed these words. It's from the book of James, chapter 4. But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It goes on, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. There's a lot of different things on all of our hearts and minds. There are a lot of things that we are all dealing with. We can bring them to God. And we can humbly come to him. 
we can submit ourselves to him. And resist the devil, what he wants to say. Because he is constantly, and I, I heard somebody say it to me this week. There's sometimes I messages that we say to ourselves. But when we start hearing words like, you are no good. You, you know, those voices in our heads, that's the devil speaking to us, telling us we're not worthy. And God says, you are, I love you. You aren't worthy in yourselves, but because of Jesus, you are worthy. Those negative thoughts from the devil can control us. That, oh, you're just, you made all kinds of horrible mistakes. Oh, you're just not we need to resist the devil and submit to God and let him speak to us his love, his truth, his kindness. But also his time of saying, hey, I need you. I need you to submit to me. And where we submit to him, God hears and God helps. Let's pray. Father, this morning... We, your people, humble ourselves before you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your help. Lord, we come near to you. Lord Jesus, you know each and every one of us here this morning. Thank you. And we've come together to lift up your name. <laughs> and on this Father's Day to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Jesus, You know each and every one of us and the things that we're struggling with. I, I myself, Lord, am struggling with just knowing what to do. In some situations, I know how I want to act, and it's not what you would say. There's ways that you want to say it with a different attitude. Lord Jesus, help me in knowing what to do with the right attitude, an attitude of humility, but also a, of love. Jesus, for each of us, there are those situations we don't know what to do. We need you as your people. Thank you. I keep coming back to that. Thank you, God. That you're here with us, helping us in these different situations. Though at times we really, truly don't know what to do, we call out to you. Help us, Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. Lord, as we continue to sing and as we continue to, to praise you, and as we continue to lift up your name, may you be glorified in all that is said and done. And we thank you again. And God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Lost or saved, find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your
If you would, turn in your Bibles to the 2 Kings chapter 6, and let's stand in honor of God's Word as we read the, read the first seven verses of 2 Kings chapter 6. The Word of the Lord for us today. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pull and let us build a place there for us to live. He said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with us, your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there. And may the iron float. Lift it out, he said. And the man reached out his hand and took it. Let's pray. Happy Father's Day, God. Thank you for your many blessings and for your help in our daily lives. Help us to hear what you want us to hear and to obey you. We love you. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever lost something important that you didn't mean to? You know, keys. Where are my keys? You know, where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? You know, you know that feeling? Of course, they're right here and they're right here. They're jingling. I, I saw just the other day somebody said, Hey, do you know where my phone is? I can't seem to find it. Silly things, but they're important to us, right? You know, there's little things. And have you ever done this where you had said, hey, I'll be someplace at a certain time? That was maybe three hours ago or maybe two days ago, maybe even a week. And they call you up and says, hey, we said we're meeting. <sighs> Finding things or doing things that we didn't mean to, um, where we lose them, we lose track of time or whatever, that happens to all of us. And as I shared on the Sunday teaser on Facebook, um, one of the things that's good for is to remind us we're human. It's okay. Remember that. It is okay to have those types of things happen. Maybe, yes, you need to do a better job at putting it in, you know, scheduling it and so forth. No, don't want to turn that on. That will do all kinds of crazy things. Um, but, you know, we have, we think everything in control and everything is going smoothly according to our plans. And then as somebody once said, you know, the great, greatest um, laid plans of mice and men. You know, they don't always turn out the way we want them to. Things that happened all around us. Something happens. And in this story, we hear of them doing this important task. They were trying desperately to build this great new place for all of them to meet. There was a struggle going on. There was all of these various things happening in their lives. And they were just trying to do the right type of thing. And all of a sudden, as they're trying to build this new school of the prophets, one of the prophets that's a student there has the axe head come off. Anybody ever had that happen? I hate that when that happens. It's a scary thing because you hope and pray there's nobody around, for one, that it might hit. But two... 
that it doesn't go get lost. Uh, when it comes to golfing, because that's another thing I thought of iron, huh? sorry, the golf balls, uh, I always hated that. And I don't golf, so don't ask. <laughs> I hate the things. I would be your worst nightmare on the golf course, not because you would win, that's a definite, but one, you don't want to see me in that type of, don't you just have to hit the ball a certain way? It should go that way, right? When you're doing this, sort of like bowling, no. Don't do either of those things. I mean, ugh. There's, that, I realize there is skill for those who are golfers or bowlers. I understand that. But sometimes you just, it, things don't happen the way you want them to. Been there? Done that? What do you do when you lose something you didn't mean to? How do you find it? I think... This story is very important for us. See, the axe head flies off. And by the way, that's probably where we get our flying off the handle. And by the way, yes, I am really struggling with that. So some of you have heard some of the requests. I don't want to go and spend my time there. But there are some areas where I'm struggling with this. So I almost went that direction, but I thought, nah, that, that's too close. Not too close to home. That's not what I'm meaning. But... That's, that's sort of an off subject that doesn't need to be covered. But there are some things that God wants to say to us today from this whole situation. Life happens, okay? We live in a fallen world where things aren't always... I don't want to say that, yeah, yeah, I do where basically things don't go right. Sin has entered the world. There are things that happen. People do stupid things. We do stupid things. Sin has messed up so much all around us. God is greater, and I know that. But we still live within a fallen world where sometimes people who are not following God do wrong things. Bad things happen. And because of sin, sometimes terrible things happen. There's just so many different things. But understand this. It's not necessarily our fault when, like, the axe head comes off. Oh, you might say that, you know, I should have fixed that. Or I should have done something. I should have checked it. I remember when a car top carrier came off of a vehicle of mine. and I, But I had no idea that when it was raining, I needed to every f stop for gas, I needed to tighten it. I didn't know. Nobody told me anything about it. I had no experience. And the renter didn't tell me that. So I had no clue. So when it came off, I was a little dumbfounded. Yes. Technically, I didn't know better, and I should have done something about it. But life happens, and it's not our fault when those things happen. Now, if it happens a second time, hmm, that's a different story. If it happens a third time, <sighs> then you start wondering, is there something up here? <laughs> a fourth time, and you know there's nothing up there. Just kidding. <laughs> there's another thing, and I'm going to touch on a subject that may be a little too close to home at times. COVID happened. And I will tell you, that wasn't any of our faults. Okay? I don't even know if I'd say it was God's fault. No. It's part of being part of a fallen world disease happens. But where there is one thing that's true, COVID showed so much of what's in our hearts. All kinds of things that happen all through the COVID time is it showed what was really inside of us. A lot of the divisiveness, a lot of things that nobody wanted to bring out. COVID showed so many of those different pieces. And in the midst of COVID, I feel like we lost things. 
The axe head fell off. We didn't know what was going on. Life happened, and we were caught without knowing. Hey, I'm sorry. I don't think there is, and Jim, I'm pretty sure, and I know this is true, that nobody was around the last time a pandemic hit. I think it was around 1917. Nobody had ever dealt with it before. Oh, we should have known history, but we'd forgotten. And I'll tell you, in another 100 years, people will forget this, the lessons from this, just because we as humans tend to forget our history, and we don't tend to listen to our historians. It's one of those things that happens. See, there are other events, too, that can cause us to lose that which we didn't mean to. See, COVID did something, and there are other life events that do this to us, that we lose maybe our passion, maybe our reason for doing things, maybe our faith. Certain things happen, and we don't understand that's why Paul said to Timothy, fan into flame the gift of God which was given to you. Fan into flame. Do those things to help. Do those things. See, the axe head falls off. What do we do? <coughs> we need to first and foremost recognize what happened. Some of us, I'll, I'll tell you, <laughs> and I have been there, I think in regard to things, there's a lot of us, after we've lost some stuff, we just keep swinging. I'm sorry, the axe handle's not going to do anything, <laughs> right? Anybody ever tried to knock or cut down a tree without the axe head? Can't really be done. We know that. We need that cutting edge. We need that. So we have to acknowledge and stop swinging the axe trying to cut down the tree. We need to be careful. <laughs> There's the a song that came to my mind when I was putting this all together. Um, it's from uh, Maverick in Top Gun. It says, have you lost that loving feeling? <laughs> We have to recognize what's happened. And we have to acknowledge to God our need. I think the biggest struggle that I personally have, and I th have realized it's true in a lot of others, is the, the ability to stop where we're at right now and say, something's wrong. So often we push through. We try to keep hacking at the tree, cutting down the tree with the handle, and we don't acknowledge the fact that the axe has come off. The cutting edge is gone. So we have to first and foremost recognize that we've lost it. The other part that goes with the recognizing is that we have others around us. And not to say anything to those who are online, as I've had to be online myself, and I'm thankful for the online ministry. In fact, I was pushing for it back in the early 2000s as a pastor. I was trying desperately to get us to go that direction. And it wasn't until a pandemic that we realized, because there are a lot of people who are homebound, who can't get out. We need to reach out. But there's also the point where we have to not just let that take care of all the needs, because we need each other. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25, say very important words, but the last verse, let us not Neglect being together. We need each other. And not just here. Not just now during this one hour. 
this maybe two hours or maybe even the three hours. But we need occasionally, you know, the disciples, they all got together almost daily. When you listen to the early church, they got together. Now, that wasn't mean the whole group of them, but they got together. We need to be with each other. We need to experience life together. This is not something we do on our own because we need each other. They were all together and there was the ability of that one prophet who was cutting down the tree to say, hey, hey, I just lost the axe head. Now, probably some people saw it, or one, they probably heard him call it out. Oh, no! I've been out there in the woods with some friends, and you, especially if you're cutting down trees, you are paying attention to other people because they might have something to say. Hey, the tree's falling! <laughs> Get out of the way! There's all of those different things But the last thing we need to recognize is that we need to get humble. We need to humble ourselves and say we have a need. For us guys out there, for all of us guys, there's a time where we have to say, I don't know the way. I'm kind of lost. Anybody know the way? Um, I love GPSs. I don't have to ask the gas station person, but I have found that the GPS also takes me uh, the wrong places a lot of times. So, where did we lose it? That's the other part that's right here in this passage, is the ability to say, where did we lose it? Because... That's one of the things the prophet says. So where did it fall off? Where did it go? What happened? Tell me about it. And so we share with God. And he takes us back to the place where we lost it. So if it was during COVID, he takes us back to those areas. When maybe something else happened in life, a job got stopped. Your job got gotten rid of. It was no longer needed. He takes us back to those areas and he helps us see that he is there too. He understands. See, it helps us to acknowledge our loss and to face the truth that something's wrong, that something's up. It comes back to being humble. And when we do, when we go back to where we lost it, God then can bring the axe head to the surface. And I'll tell you, if you read that story, you got to sort of go, huh? Iron does not float. Right? Anybody lost, uh, you know, a hook when you're fishing? You're out on the canoe, and all of a sudden, something happens, and ah, that was my favorite lure. Ugh, hate that. All those type of things, you, you get the picture. God can restore those things. God wants to bring back our cutting edge. He wants to bring back to us that which we find helpful. He wants to come back and help us. Oh, so thankful for that. See, God restores us. There's an important story here is that God our good, uh, important part of the story is that God restores us. He brings back the cutting edge. That part of you that's been lost, 
That part of you, that passion for God, that passion for doing the things for God, the passion for just going about life, he will restore it. He will bring it back. And let me share it with you. You can't do it yourself. This is where, again, it's where we have to be humble. It's not something that we can do ourselves. I know there are many people that during COVID tried desperately to bring things back for themselves. I'm sorry. The passion isn't ours. It's his. For us as Christians, what we need is to have that restored from him. We cannot work enough to get it. I, I say that very strongly. Because I have tried, I have tried desperately in the midst of things to try to do it on my own strength. And God says, stop, stop, rest in me and let me restore it. Those who have ever tried to overcome some of the hardest things in life realize that if we can do it ourselves, we don't need God. And when we realize that we can't do it ourselves, that we do need God. And he will indeed help us. I want to conclude this morning with an idea of this whole, of this cutting edge, this, this restoring of this missing part, this finding what we didn't mean to lose. Warren Warnsby, in looking at this passage, made this statement. And there, here is how I want to end. The good news is that the Lord can recover what we have lost and put it back to work. If we lose our cutting edge, he can restore us and make us efficient in his service. The important thing is to recognize that you have lost it and when and where you lost it. Honestly, confess it to him then we can get back to work. We can go back. He can restore it. He can do it. Trust him. He wants to do this in each one of our lives. And I don't know the circumstances. I don't need to know the circumstances. Nobody else does. You do in talking with God. And so as we close this morning's service, I want us to pray and ask God to help us in dealing with that. Let's pray. Father God, again, thank you. Thank you for, I guess, first and foremost, for saving us, for doing what was necessary for us to have a relationship with Thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making it evident in each of our lives. But Lord, there are times when we didn't mean to lose some of this faith that you have given to us, some of these ideas you've given to us, some of these hopes, some of these powers, some of the strengths, some of the gifts. We didn't mean to lose them but we confess them to you that we have and we need you. Jesus, I ask just in this quiet moment that you would just speak to each and every heart. You know us. You know us so well. Lord, restore to us the joy of our salvation. Re restore in us the desire to please you, the desire to go and do great things for you. Lord, restore to us what we need. Restore to us our relationship with you in a stronger and stronger way. Lord, as 
we know go, as we now go and share in Father's Day celebrations or whatever, the various things, would you help us to remember that you are a Father who cares so much about each and every one of our lives and all the different things that are going on. Help us, Lord, as we go from this place, allowing you to help us find what we didn't mean to lose and restore to us a cutting edge to make a difference in the world all around us. And God's people said, amen. Go in the power of the Spirit knowing He is going to use you. And for the fathers who want some, there is uh, gifts in the back that Melinda has. Go in the power of the Spirit.